This is Mr. Hassan's Math Channel, and I'm now answering question number four from the June 2023 Pure Mathematics P3 exam from the International A Level LXL um, examining board. And this question number, is, or this question, is about functions. And it says a function f is defined by f of x equals 2x squared minus 5, um, and x is greater than or equal to 0, and x is an element of the real numbers. State the range of f. So basically, when we're finding the range of a function, we are looking at the output of the function. The range is to do with the output of the function. So we can think of this in two ways. One of them is if we, we know that um, this function is a quadratic. Okay. So when we're thinking about a quadratic function, we should understand that either it has a maximum value above, above which it never goes, or a minimum value below which it never goes. Okay, and then we have to also consider the domain that we're given. What x values we start with and what x values we end with, um, possibly. So those things have to be taken into account when you are finding the range of a function. So one of the best ways to understand how to do the range or find the range of the function is by sketching it. Now, after a little experience, I mean, this is only worth one mark. It says state. There's not really anything you have to show. It should be quite simple for you to understand that this particular function is going to have its lowest value when um, y is minus 5. So it's going to be y is greater than or equal to minus 5. If you just write that down, you will get the marks for this question. Okay, but I'm here not just to be a talking mark scheme. I'm here to explain to you the concepts for those students who need that. So I'm not just going to just say y is greater than or equal to 5 and not explain why that is the answer. Now, as I said, when we are trying to think about the range of a function, we are going to be thinking about how to sketch that function. So if we were to sketch this function, okay, imagine we sketched it without any um, limit to the domain first. Just think about how it would look if we just sketched it without any limit to the domain. We know it's a quadratic. Okay, so the first thing we can say is quadratic. Okay, so it's going to have either this shape or this shape. Now, this shape is when the coefficient of x squared is greater than zero, and this when it's less than zero, it's positive, and this is when it's negative. Smiley face, frowny face, you could say. Right, so when it's positive, when the coefficient of x squared is positive, it's going to look like this. So it's going to have this type of shape. Right, that's one thing. And we can find where it hits the y-axis. Okay, where does it hit the y-axis? It hits the y-axis when x is zero. So it hits the y-axis when x is zero, and that happens to be the start of our, um, you know like a domain when x is zero that's where it starts from so when x is zero you can see that y is equal to minus five so it's going to hit the x-axis at minus five okay and it's going to have this type of frowning face and the next thing we have to work out when we got quadratic is where is the vertex okay we can also work out where it hits the the x-axis in this case here's the x-axis if you want to don't really need to here when y equals zero in that case, 2x, minus, 2x squared minus 5 equals 0. So x squared is equal to 5 over 2. So x equals plus or minus the square root of 5 over 2. In this case, it will just be positive to the square root of 5 over 2, which is going to be somewhere over here. Okay, so it's going to hit somewhere over there, at positive root of 5 over 2. We don't have to actually draw that in here, so there's no, no need for us to even draw it. We're just going to, just for your information, if it, if it was unrestricted, it would go like this. Okay, so we have to also work out now where the vertex is. The vertex is the lowest point it reaches. Now, if it's in this form, of course, the vertex is going to be at the point 0 minus 5. Because if you think about this, this is like something like this, you could say. If you complete the square for this, you end up with something like that. Right? It's already kind of completed the square, but you can think of it like this. So the coordinates of the vertex are the opposite of this sign, which happens to be just zero, because you know, opposite of zero is zero anyway. And this is going to be the same as this minus five. So zero minus five, this is the vertex. That is the lowest point that it reaches. So if we were to draw this function, like, you know, without any restriction, it would look something like this. It would have that type of shape. Okay. So it would go through minus 5, and it would have this type of shape. Okay, but we are starting from minus 5. That's where we're starting from, and we're going on 
indefinitely. So we're going to get rid of this part. So we can see here that the range of this function, the range of this function is going to be the range meaning all the output values, the y values are the output, the x values are the input. So this is the domain, this is the domain, which is all these values you can take. And the range are the values from minus 5 going upwards. So from minus 5 going upwards will be the range of this function. Okay, so it actually hits minus 5 because the domain includes 0, all right? So it's going to include minus 5. So we can say the range is going to be y is greater than or equal to negative 5, okay? So we can say if you want f of x is greater than or equal to negative 5. Don't write x for the, the range. x is for the domain. So it's the range is given by this. Now you could have just wrote this answer down. So state the range of s. You don't, don't have to write down any of these steps. But as I said, I'm just explaining this so that students can understand the concept properly. Okay, so that is the range of function f. Okay, it should take you seconds to answer it, but I'm, as I, as I said, explaining in a bit more detail. Now, for part b, okay, it says, on the following page, which is this page here, I just moved the questions around so it's easy for us to see. So on this page here, there's a diagram, the diagram 1, which shows a sketch of the curve with the equation y equals f of x. So actually... What we sketched is exactly this. So we know that this is minus 5 here. Okay. Now it's asking us on diagram 1 to sketch the curve with the equation, the inverse of f of x. Now what you should understand is the inverse function. Okay. So you have y equals f of x. Okay. And you have the inverse of f of x. Inverse f minus 1 of the function f. So... The coordinates that we know, for example, 0 minus 5, in the inverse function, they swap around. The x becomes a y, the y becomes an x. So instead of being 0 minus 5, it's going to be minus 5 and 0. Okay, so 0 minus 5 becomes minus 5 and 0, which will be over here. And this point here that we found was the square root of 5 over 2 is going to be, so this, we found that to be the square root of 5 over 2. Um, 0, that's going to become 0, and the square root of 5 over 2. So it's going to be over here. So basically what's going to happen is this shape is going to be reflected in the, um, in the line y equals x. Okay, so if I draw the line y equals x here, okay, it's going to be reflected in that line. Okay, so that's the line y equals x. It's going to be reflected in that line. So let me just make this a bit more realistic. That length is a bit less than that, so try and make them the same. Then we can then just draw this basically to go something like this. Okay, this is y equals inverse of f of x. Okay, so that should be fine. It's like reflecting the line y equals x. That's how we draw the inverse function. Okay, so that's sketch the curve with the equation y equals inverse of f of x. All right, so there's the answer to part B. Okay, so I've marked here the point where it crosses the, the x-axis, and I've also put here the point where it crosses the y-axis. Okay, which you don't, um, you know, I don't think you need, need to worry about that too much. So there is the equation with this function. And you can see that the inverse function, its domain, okay, is the same as the range of the original function. The domain of this function, you see, starts from minus 5 and goes up to, you know, carries on. So the domain is x is greater than or equal to minus 5. And the range of the inverse function is the same as the domain of the original function. If you see the domain of this function, it's going to be y is greater than 0. Okay, so the, the, the range will be y is greater than or equal to 0. As you can see, that's the same as the range of, of the domain of the original function. The original function... Its domain is x is greater than equal to 0. So the x's and y's swap over. Okay, so we don't really need to know that stuff for this question. We just need to know that it's a reflection in the line y equals x. And that, there we get the answer. So there's the answer for part b. And then for part c, it says the curve with equation y equals f of x, which is the one that's drawn, um, meets the curve that we drew at the point p. So this is the point p here where they meet. Okay, so it says... Using algebra and showing you working, find the exact x-coordinate of P. 
So there's two ways we could do this question, okay? There's two ways we could do this question. Um, now, the easiest way to do this question is to understand that they both meet when y equals x. When y is equal to x, they both meet, okay? So this is y equals 2x squared minus 5, all right? So when 2x squared minus 5 equals x, that's when they're going to meet. So we can solve this equation. Solving this equation, you have 2x squared minus x minus 5 equals 0. Now it says find the exact value of the x coordinate of p. So it seems like that uh, we won't be able to factorize this. Um, and if you try to see two numbers multiplied to give you minus 10, add to give you minus 1. No. So we can use the formula. We can use completing the square. Don't just write the answers down using your calculator. You must show how you got to your answer. So I'm going to here just to remind ourselves about completing the square. I'm going to use completing the square. But normally most people would probably use the formula in the exam here. But I'm going to show you using the completing the square. If you use completing the square, what we'll have here is 2x. Well, we're going to first take out going to first what I'd like to do is to subtract the add 5 to both sides to get rid of the constant so 2x squared minus x equals 5 then get rid of the number multiplying the x so that it becomes a perfect square number so 1 so if I divide everything by 2 I have x squared minus a half x equals 5 over 2 and then I'm going to complete the square now it's ready to complete the square so I'm going to complete the square so I'll write a square bracket I'll have x I'll put minus because it's a minus, and then I put a half of this number, a half of this coefficient, a half of a half is a quarter, and then I take away the square of this quarter, which is going to be 1 over 16, and that's equal to 5 over 2, and then I add 1 over 16 to both sides, so I have x minus a quarter squared equals, now I'm going to get this ready to be added to that, so I'll make this over 16, so I'll multiply this by 8, multiply by that by 8, so it's going to be 40, over 16, multiply by 8, 16, 5, 8, 40, yes, plus 1 over 16, so add 1 over 16 to both sides, and that gives me 41 over 16, so you have x minus a quarter squared equals 41 over 16, so we can say x minus a quarter is equal to plus or minus the square root of 41 over 4, square root of 16 is 4, so of course, our x value is going to be where this is positive because we can see that you know, x is greater than equal to 0 here. Okay, it's on the positive side that we're going to be dealing with it. So we have x equals, um, it's going to be 1 plus or minus root 41 over 4. So there's the answer in its exact form, the exact x coordinate of p. So we can say the x coordinate of p is equal to 1 plus or minus root 41 all over 4, and there is the answer to part C. Now, it's very important that you understand what we did here, because if we were to have to solve this in another way, which is the way that most people would probably try to solve it, is they would have tried to solve it by finding the inverse of fx, the actual expression for it, which is not too difficult. You have y equals 2x squared minus 5, then you make y equals x, and x equals y, and then you make y the subject, so you have x plus 5 equals 2y squared, and then um, you have y squared equals x plus 5 over 2, and then you take the square root of both sides, so x equals plus or minus the square root of x plus 5 over 2. As we can see, you know, we need the positive square root because we're taking what's right of the vertex for this inverse, so we take the positive of the square root, Okay, not the negative side. Okay, so it's just going to be the plus root x plus 5 over 2. Okay, we don't take the negative side because that would have been the side that would be on this side over here. And then what we have to do is we have to take this and equate it to, we have to solve this simultaneously with the original equation. So the inverse of f of x is the root of x plus 5 over 2. And the original equation is 2x squared minus 5. So you'd say 2x squared minus 5 equals the square root of x plus 5 over 2. And then you're left with a really complicated um, problem here because then you've got to get rid of the square root. So you have to square both sides. So you have 2x squared minus 5 squared equals x plus 5 over 2. 
And then it's going to be a big hassle because you're going to have to square this, you're going to have exit power four terms, and it's, it's a huge hassle. So it's very, it's not very easy to answer in this way. Okay, so this leads you up a path which is going to cause a lot of problems and waste a lot of time. So of course, the easiest way for you to do this is to understand that when you want to find where the inverse function and the original function meet, they meet on the line where y equals x. So if you were to just equate this to x, that's where y equals x, because this is y equals 2x squared minus 5. When y equals x, that's where they meet. So that's why when you solve 2x squared minus 5 equals x, you solve this equation, you get the value of x where they meet. Value or values. In this case, we're only concerned with this one value. All right, because this side, if, it, if we did have this continuing on, then it wouldn't have an inverse because the inverse would be many, sorry, one to many. And it wouldn't be an inverse. Okay, so there we have, or it wouldn't be a function. So there we have the answer to question number four from this paper, June 2023. Some very important points here. So quite a simple question, but it can become quite complicated if you don't appreciate some of these important points. So um, if you would like to find other questions from this particular paper, you can click on the link over here. If you want to find questions from um, this topic of functions from P3 of uh, Edexcel, you can find the link over here for that. The playlist will be over here. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. And you can here click on this video or this link to the video which tells you how to use my channel to find what you're looking for. Thank you for watching and see you soon.